So hi, Dan. How are you doing? How are you? Oh, <laughs> whoa. What are you up to these days? You said you just jumped out of the studio. Are you like really more creative right now with all the free time yeah. you have? I mean, we planned to take things easy this year and just focus on writing and recording and living our lives a bit. Because um, we've sort of been on the road for like seven years. We've been on tour pretty much constantly. Um, But, you know, we had no idea that a huge global pandemic would also happen. So it's been a strange year for everybody. Um, I think um, we've just we've just tried to stay busy and, and be useful, uh, you know, locally um, and also online. I guess we've been running a film club as a way to hopefully distract people. Yeah. Uh, and, and a nice excuse to sort of start some conversations and connect people who are maybe feeling isolated and yeah. and talk, talk about some brilliant, brilliant films. Uh, but yeah, we've been like making music. We're, I've been working at a food bank a couple of days a week and delivering food to people, uh, just trying to be useful, you know. Wow. Um, it's a strange time, but also, you know, friends, friends, of, friends of ours that are doctors and nurses and who are having a really hard time just trying to be there for them, you know? Wow. Uh, I'm sure like the same shit as everybody. Yeah, no, but, uh, no. It's, it's really useful spend time. So thank you for doing that. That's not what everybody does. That's, that's it. How about you? How's, how's, your, uh, how's your lockdown been? How's your summer been so far? Oh, we're opening up in Germany a bit. So that's quite good on one hand side. On the other hand side, it's a bit... I don't know. It's just, it's just like, hey, why, why did we close everything to just now open it up just like that, yeah. you know, yeah, just like yeah. in a glimpse. Okay, <laughs> so it could be that bad, but yes. So no, but I had a quite, quite normal day, actually, because I had to work on the radio station, really go in there every day. So I had kind of a normal work. Oh, no way. You got to just keep going back in. Yeah, sure, sure. Oh, yeah, so that was great. quite normal. So that was what's kept me going and kept me sane and kept me okay. I do have like a structured day. So that was really helpful for me, actually. I think we all, everybody needed to find their, find their structure in this new normal, didn't they? You yeah. know, some people like you were lucky enough to keep going. So over here, quite a lot of people got kind of furloughed from their jobs. So they, you know, suddenly didn't have to work. Some people lost their jobs and had the, yeah. you know, were absolutely terrified. Other people with families have, you know, so, you know, so many distractions in that respect. And it's been such a mad, obviously mad time for so many people, but just so different, you know, given like, Do you have any outside space to go into or not? Like all these things have such a hugely profound effect on, on what, what, what this period has been like for people. But yeah, my friends who've been able to keep going into work definitely had like a lot more of a, a focus. And yeah. um, I think everybody else, you know, some people it was like, right, what's my routine? Well, drinking yeah. in the evenings and on the weekends, that's what makes <laughs> it feel like a day. Um, and other yeah. people have gone like super healthy. Uh, it's, yeah, it's been, it's been really interesting. Yeah, But, uh, it is. It really um, is. So uh, did music and writing music actually help you to cope with everything? For, for me, for our band, it's a way to sort of, it's a way to tell stories and to, to make shit up and to, you know, relive moments in our lives and, um, and to say the things we want to say, you know, as loudly as possible. And it's an excuse to work with other people and meet interesting creative people and, you know, make music videos like this one we made with a, an Iranian animator called Reza, who is like one of the most brilliant, crazy, mad scientist geniuses I've ever met. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that, that may not have ever happened. And, and so I feel like uh, it's been music for us during this period has been a, a really, a really great escape. It's been a routine. Uh, how did this all change? Like the process of making music, how did this all change? Is it really different from before? Sure it is. Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, we're lucky we have a studio in in south london so i just jump on my bike and cycle for half an hour to the studio Perfect. and we could work in diff we could work in different rooms from each other mm -hmm. or i could go and work by myself but it was to have somewhere to go a bit like for you it was amazing yeah. but i also did a lot at home you know i was writing with people over zoom was kind of weird and interesting um you know on this song on what you're gonna do uh we'd recorded it um kind of separately Just and just before the lockdown started, we recorded okay. the drums, and then uh, we made it sound as heavy as we could, and then and then we thought like let's send it to Graham Coxon, and that was a real like lockdown 2020 kind of experience of sending it to him, him him recording loads of guitars, sending them back, 
you know, us like sending him comments and then asking <laughs> him to do vocals and he sent those, and, you know, that yeah. was a real back and forth. And that, that as a process was different, but you know, if, if someone jumps around in their room for two minutes to this song hey. and, has, and has a good time, that's yeah. fucking awesome. If somebody that's wants to, awesome. engage, if someone wants to engage with the lyrics and if, uh, if they agree with us, that's also fucking awesome. You know, yeah. you, you, Is it more difficult to open up, especially when songwriting, uh, to a, to a screen? You know, by only seeing the songwriters on a screen and not really being their personal and everything. Writing a song with somebody else is fucking weird. Like mm -hmm. it's such, it's such a weird thing to do to sit in a room with somebody and sing at each other and play instruments. Like, come on, it's yeah. it, it's like a fucking weird way <laughs> to spend your day. Like it's fun, sure, and it can be rewarding, but. <laughs> The baseline is right. What we're doing here is quite strange. Like, so I guess transferring that onto Zoom, everybody's kind of had to switch elements of their life onto Zoom, and and uh, and I think at the beginning I thought it was just a bit. I thought it was impossible. It felt so unnatural. Yeah. Um, there's a new song that we have that's probably one of my favorite songs we've ever done that I wrote with this guy called Dan Wilson, mm -hmm. who's in a band called Semisonic, um, and you know, and, and, uh, and has written some amazing songs. And it was, it's a, a song that I sort of been thinking about and wanting to write for ages. Okay. Um, just getting to do it with him mm -hmm. um, was great. because you're just like, you can concentrate, you know, it's a, it's kind of weird. So you both want to get off the Zoom as quickly as possible. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a real incentive to get it done. No, this news came quite surprising, at least for us, that you're releasing a new, a new song to today or tonight. Um, was it as surprising for you as it was for us? No. Or was it, was it planned? Was it not planned at all? How did that happen? Um, it's, been, it's been kind of planned. But <laughs> we wanted to surprise people, both with the release and with the sound of it. Um, we, I guess we're kind of, we finished our last three albums and that was kind of a trilogy Uh, and with this next phase, with whatever we do next, we just want to keep things spontaneous and fresh and um, and unexpected. And so, yeah, we, we, we wanted this to come out of the blue for, for people. But, you know, the, the video, which Reza made, you know, that's, that's been in the works for like five, six weeks. Um, we just want to change the way that we release stuff a bit and, and be a bit more free with it and just have fun mm -hmm. with it. You know? Yeah. So what you gonna do comes, as you, as you just said, after the second album, which was kind of a phase about, okay, wild world, let's act in this wild world and react to this wild world. And then it was Doom Days, which was more like willingly choosing to be naive and distract yourself. So yeah. which phase is what you're gonna do? Good question. I um, love when I you say that. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yes! <laughs> It is meant to be tongue in cheek and it's, it's a story. And I think a lot of the new songs going forward are, are you know, are stories about people. Um, and this song is, is sort of meant to be a kind of eye rolling tongue in cheek look at the fact that it feels like everyone is fighting for our attention and our time all the time. Yeah. And this is, this is basically us and everybody Just saying like, cool, you got us, you've got our attention, you've shouted loud enough, you've flashed images in our faces. Like now that you have us, what are you going to do? Like give us something worthwhile, give us something at least entertaining or funny, but hopefully something with a bit of like substance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I guess we wanted to just make something that was, you know, kind of uh, a, a call to arms in a way. You know, these are really strange times. So Yeah, sure. So I think we wanted to sort of be challenging, but also for it to, on one level, just be a fun, loud yeah, song, it is. song you can jump around to, yeah. Yeah, I've, I, I, I've had a listen and, and it really is. So it really comes across. So thank you for doing that because I really jumped around a bit. I was on a tube and I was like, mm, and it was so <laughs> sneaky because nobody was supposed to hear it. And I was like, yes, I'm hearing the new song, but you don't know it. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> So thank you for doing that. Oh, right. How do you recognize that maybe sometimes it's so too much for you, like being on social media all the time and, and seeing all the news all the time and all those Instagram pictures and everything. How do you recognize like yourself that it's sometimes too much? 
Yeah, that's a really good. That's a really good point. I, I, I can definitely fall down the trap of of getting sucked into that stuff too much. Um, I guess anybody that's kind of curious um, and wants to know what's happening in the world and with their friends, like it's it's so easy to just spend way too much time on your phone or on your computer. Um, and I think that's just the, the reality of modern life, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and yeah, sure. Sometimes it's really fucking bad for your brain, for your head, for your mood. Uh, but you can just get sucked into it and it's totally addictive. So I guess that's something that like a lot of people I kind of grapple with all the time. I see the benefit of putting it down and being, being present in the place that you are and trying to enjoy yourself. And I think, you know, that's something that this lockdown time showed some people, yeah. but I can say that as much as I like. <laughs> the reality <laughs> is I'm still surgically attached to my mobile. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a weird one. It's, yeah. it's, it's, but sometimes it's good to just, for your mental health, to just like ban yourself from your phone and yeah. say at least on Sundays, or sometimes I do that, at least on Sunday, no phone allowed. And, and that's good for your mental health, I guess. That's, that's such a good idea. I don't do yeah. that, but I should. I mean, I, feel, I find like, on the, I, I like cycle to the studio and that half an hour for me is like, I, I literally can't be on my phone. So it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's, 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 in fact, it's, it's really good. But it's funny because like also, you know, in, in, when lockdown started, they also allowed us to be connected to people like family and friends all over the world um, in such an amazing way. So it's, it's this real like double-edged sword, I think. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, whatever. So last question, because I think we're running out of time. I've heard you saying that you think you're making some of the best music you've ever made. Uh, why is that? When I play my friends on music or people that I know you know, are interested, but it's not their life. Like yeah. and, and when, when I play stuff to them and they're like, oh, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Oh. That for me is the most gratifying thing. I love that because you could make it easy to yourself and just say, I'm releasing the, the music that I've ever made. And what I love about your music that it is really surprisingly every time and that you really have substance in your in your songs and that's what i really love because sometimes i guess it could be you know those easy songs just the party songs like wiggle wiggle or something like that and that's more easy and they're getting sometimes more attention than than um, music that's with subtemps and it's a little bit more you know I think the, most important, the most important thing for me is like for me pop music can be anything like yeah. smells like smells like teen spirit is a mm. massive pop song you know even though it's yeah. got screamingly loud guitars and uh you know and and And, and I think pop music to me just means memorable and significant. And so for yeah. us, the only rules are that it's got to be memorable and it has to say something, even if you're not even aware of it on first listen. Yeah. I want our songs to stick to your brain, but I also want them, when you actually listen to them, to say something or at least ask something yeah. that's interesting. And so hopefully we'll continue to do that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for, thanks, for, thanks for playing the song and thank you for listening to it. Yeah, see you soon. Thanks so much. Thank you Cheers. so much. Bye.